안녕하세요. Today we are going to talk about cookies. Beautiful things that are delicious, but I cannot eat because I'm on a diet. And cookies, the things that websites use to remember who you are, where you come from, and in the case of Facebook, what website do you go to, what are your interests, what everything that you do on the internet. We're going to learn how the hell can something so beautiful like a cookie be used to spy on us. HTTP, the thing that you use to go to a website, HTTP, nomadcoaches.co, that is something that is called stateless. Stateless means with no memory, okay? The websites don't have a connection that stays forever with the user. A request is when I go to a website and I request the homepage of Naver, for example. Then right there, there is a connection, yes, because I am requesting something from Naver. I'm requesting the HTML of the page. Once I get my answer, once I get the HTML, boom, the connection is closed. It's finished. Neighbor doesn't care about me because it's done. He did his job. I requested the homepage. He gave me the homepage. Finished. There is no need to keep the connection alive. No need whatsoever. The problem is that we do need to remember users. When you have a website, you want to have user profile. When you have a website, you want to remember, I don't know, the language preferences or the region where they're coming from or their, the username and, and the user who is going to my website. That is why we invented cookies, because we needed to find a way of remembering stuff about our users. So the most useful example for cookies is authorization, okay? Let's do it really quickly. A user, user sends his username and a password to a database and a server. They check that is correct, and what they do is that they take something like a receipt, okay? And they say, okay, in this receipt, this is Nicholas, and we believe this paper. They take this paper and they give it back to the user. They say this paper says ID 1234, whatever. Now the user is the one in charge of keeping this paper, all right? Keeping the receipt. He says, I am Nicholas. And now this is done on the browser. The browser automatically will take all the cookies or the receipts and save them on your hard disk. And also the browser automatically is in charge of every time that you send a request to a website, the browser will send all the receipts that you have collected from that website. So for example, in this case, if I go to who am I, automatically the browser will send that receipt, the server will get that receipt, and he will read the receipt, oh, that is Nicolas. Okay, so Nico, hello, how are you? And the connection is finished again. Once Nico wants to talk to the browser, to the server again, he will have to send another receipt. This happens on every single request. As I just told you, the HTTP is a stateless. It doesn't remember. Cookies are built for that. So we can have some information that is remembered, all right? Also, for example, if you have cookies for language, so let's say that the user sets the language to Korean, then we give the user a cookie saying you are from Korea, all right? Now, every time the user gets, sends a request to the server, the server will answer appropriately. In this case, he will say Anyong because he reads the cookie, language Korean, and he will answer appropriately. Now, the same thing happens if I change the language, then the server will understand that cookie and it will act accordingly. Those are cookies. Very, very easy. Now, the cookies have some rules. The rules of cookies are this. They are domain scoped. This means that they are limited to one domain. For example, a cookie that was created by facebook.com will not be sent to netflix.com. Cookies are limited to their domain. So if a cookie was created by Facebook, only is going to be sent to Facebook. Neighbor.com cannot read cookies from netflix.com. This is very important to remember of why can Facebook know where do we go everywhere, even if we are not logged in. Or even if we have, or even if we don't have a, a profile, that is one domain scope. The second one is that they are sent automatically. The server can send you as many cookies as it wants, and your browser will save them automatically. You will never get a pop-up saying, "The browser wants to save this cookie, allow or disallow." It just happens automatically, whether you want to or not. And also, they are set automatically. So automatically, you don't control this. You don't control this. 
For this, let's, I'm going to give you an example. So we're going to go here. This is my Chrome. It's clean, as you can see here. There's no cookies. And I'm going to go to the New York Times. New York, all right? So I'm going to go to the New York Times, and I want you to look at the cookies, okay, that I get from the New York Times. Here we go. Three, two, one. Click on the New York Times. Let's open cookies. And now look at all, look at this amount here on this side. Look at all the cookies that I'm getting. And this is weird because I just told you cookies are limited to the domain. So in theory, I should only be getting cookies from the New York Times. But it looks like right now, even if I didn't want to, I am getting cookies from all these people that I don't know and I haven't never ever met in my life. That is how Facebook knows where you go everywhere. And I'm going to explain to you right now. As I told you, Cookies are domain scoped. This means that only Facebook.com can send and get cookies from Facebook.com. This is clear. In this case, for example, we have linksblog.com, correct? Linksblog.com doesn't have any link to Facebook. Linksblog.com is just an empty HTML page with some text. Question, will Facebook set or get any cookie? No, because they are scoped by a domain. Facebook.com, linksblog.com, different cookies, different domains, there is no sharing of information between each other. But now, what happens if Lin's blog puts a Facebook like button? The Facebook like button has a link to facebook.com. And not a link like you can click on the link and go to Facebook. Maybe the Facebook button downloads the thumbs up icon. Maybe the Facebook button downloads some mini JavaScript. Maybe the Facebook button downloads a small one pixel image transparent maybe what happens then i am requesting something from where from facebook.com why because lin's blog pasted that facebook like button code what happens you are correct the browser will send a request to facebook.com maybe to just get the like button that png but this request is going to be loaded with cookies. So usually what Facebook is learning about you is the following thing. It's saying, okay, the user with the cookie 1234 is asking for the like button.png from where? From Lin's blog. And this is exactly why also I went to the New York Times.com and I got a cookie from media.net, Google.com, Amazon Ad System, BlueK.com, things that I have ever, never, ever visited. Now I have a cookie from them. Every request that you do to any website will give you cookies and will send cookies. And now, because the Facebook people are brilliant, all the websites in the world have this very evil button that is recording everywhere you go. That's it for this video. I hope that you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like if you loved it. And if you have any other questions, other newbie questions, please let me know. Maybe the next video will be cookies versus tokens. Leave a like, subscribe, eat kimchi, be happy, and that's it. Bye-bye.